goal and uh, legislative proposals that he was considering before his exit from the ministry and uh, more so around the issue of uh, implementation of Article 37 of the Constitution on the right of Kenyans to picket, assemble, demonstrate peaceably. And see, as you have seen in the recent past, um, a lot of confrontations between members of the public and the police. And it's my view that principally why this has been so is because you have failed to designate picketing corners and Kenyans uh, imagine you can picket anywhere and everywhere uh, including in uh, some areas that you consider restricted areas I would want to hear what is it that you would intend to do if you are reappointed and approved by this committee to ensure that there are no more confrontations between members of the public who want to peaceably uh, assemble and picket and the police two there are seems to have been a complete breakdown in administrative and security structures in the country. And I say that in view of uh, when you came into office, uh, the Shakahola massacre, where up to now we don't know how many Kenyans lost their lives in Shakahola. We have seen in the recent past Kware uh, here in Nairobi, in a country like Kawas, how is it possible where you have chiefs, assistant chiefs, Nyumbakumi, and all the uh, structures and uh, security and administrative structures that we have, that 20, 40 people can be killed around one small area like Kware, in the full view of the security and administrative structures without uh, government coming to know. And the same thing happened to Shakahola. And I would want to hear what is it that you would intend to do to make sure that there is um, restoration of administrative and security structures right at the village uh, level uh, uh, to secure our country. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is true there is work that requires to be done to ensure that the people of Kenya enjoy their constitutional right and freedom to assemble, picket, and demonstrate, and present petitions to public authorities, while at the same time maintaining public order and also ensuring the rights of other people. Before I was dismissed on the 11th of July, I had actually finalized the draft regulations to the Public Order Act, which uh, uh, will be the statutory, imp uh, statutory imp instrument to be processed for purposes of giving effect to the enjoyment of that right, not to curtail that right because a statute cannot curtail a constitutional right, but to give effect to how that right will be exercised. Those draft regulations, when, when completed, will be able to help the police do a number of things. Number one, obligate the police to escort protesters and provide security for them, but also to ensure protesters don't run amok and overrun members of the public who are not protesting. Number three, it will require those protesting to s notify the police and tell and, and also give the number of protesters so that uh, the appropriate arrangements are made. It will also obligate public institutions in all arms of government, all public institutions to designate an area within their premises or within the vicinity of their premises where a group of protesters who want to present petitions can, can stand demonstrate and present petitions to that uh, public office or that public institution. That, those regulations also will, um, will of course, um, uh, ask protesters to also be responsible for their own conduct. And therefore, we hope that if I am approved, this is a, a low-hanging 
matter. It's something that we can process in the shortest time possible to avoid a situation like what we've had in the past one month of, um, of uh, protests which are unmanaged, unmanaged and which have exposed us to deaths and destruction of property and a lot of inconvenience to the people of Kenya. On the second question by the leader of the majority party, it is true that um, we have experienced um, a number of um, security incidents that uh, should not have happened in the first place. And let me say that first and foremost, the Shakahola incident didn't happen when it became public. It uh, happened over quite a number of years and it's an indictment actually on um, our ability as a country to to be able to prevent uh, some of these uh, sophisticated crimes from hurting our people. I am on record to having, having ap apologized on behalf of previous and the present administration for that breach because the radicalization and the criminal activity around Shakahola be, began in 2019, 2020. But the manifestation in terms of people uh, dying and being married, uh, being buried, was um, something that happened sometimes in 2022. And uh, the Shakahola incidents will remain the most uh, tragic security breach in the history of our country. We have never had a security breach of that magnitude in our country. We have learned the lessons. Two days ago, the task force that the president had appointed has helped to give us some of the recommendations on what we need to do to avoid uh, that going forward. But also, we believe that the public officials, including security officers who are in charge, must also have their day in being made accountable. We had proposed the establishment of a commission of inquiry to help us uh, put together the accountability process so that we can have recommendations on prosecution and, and other action but the Commission of Inquiry was stopped by our courts um, and we were unable to move. But with or without the Commission of Inquiry, I want to assure the people of Kenya, if I am approved, one of my priorities will be to make sure that the accountability for the crimes in Shakahola by public officials, including security managers of all arms, of all agencies of the state must proceed as a way of uh, making sure that we do not have this kind of thing happening again. It is true also recently we had an incident which is actively under uh, investigations around quarry area. Again, the same reasons. Gaps in the Ngao and Nyumbakumi structures and also our intelligence collection uh, ability. And I just want to to say that now that we have finalized the proposals and we know what we need to do to reform our National Police Service, my next assignment, if I am approved by this House, will be to initiate far-reaching reforms in the National Government Administration uh, um, uh, system to ensure that we restructure the Ngao system, make it more responsive, modernize it, and distribute it to the lowest level in a manner which uh, helps us to avoid incidents like this when we have serious security breaches, uh, yet we have government officials paid by the people of Kenya to make sure that the country is safe. So I want to admit those who are un 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 a very um, unfortunate incidents and um, national security being a, a work in progress and a perpetual project 
we have learned the lessons and we are going to make sure that we strengthen and seal the gaps to ensure that we make our homeland safer than it has been before. Thank you. Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, I would like to ask the nominee, Professor Abraham, that, uh, Mr. Speaker, 